This guy. This. This freaking guy. Whoa. Oh man, that's such a loud gun. <laughs> so that's that's what Ian's gonna be wielding soon. Is the two twenty three pistol. And I'm so glad Dogmeat's helping me out too. Wait, where's Tycho? Oh, he's behind the wall. Okay, I was I was a little concerned. Okay, so he's. I feel like he's near death. He's he's. On his way out. She's done. Uh, I don't think anybody else. That guy's just sleeping. <laughs> He's taking a little nap. And I think... I think what's left of the regulators is these two guys here. And... Oh, nope, sorry. Um, these... These three. And... Yeah, these two here. I think that's it. I think that's all we have to take care of. So let's hope for the best. I'm hoping for the best, for sure. Can I just, uh, need one, one spot? There we go, there we go. Groin! It's gotta be groin punches all day. Oh, it's so effective against males. <laughs> I wonder why. Let's stand in front of her, let's stand in front of her bullets. Everybody's going after these guys. Oh. Oh man, they're firing from a distance. Come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. Oh no, one of the locals died. Oh. Oh. Oh boy. It's, it keeps switching between the two, two sections of action. Yeah, so that's over here again. Yeah. Yeah, these these guys are not gonna not gonna have it easy. Smitty, I think it's all you and uh, Lorraine, one of the scavs. I f I feel like I should just run over there. If I if I start running now, I can get it in a turn. Yeah, we're gonna do that because I, I even though I'm not going to use the plasma rifle, I do want to keep Smitty alive. Just I guess for continuity's sake. <laughs> Did anybody figure out if if Smitty in this game is the same Smitty in the den in Fallout 2? Did we ever find that out? Cause he he's the oh no uh, so he's the Smitty that that provides you with the car in Fallout 2. I think she's done. She's done. What? Oh no! Do you have Ian? You better not get the blades against us too. You better not make the blades mad. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have words. If you just shot the blades by accident, and they're just like, whoop, nope, you get to kill Kato's team too. Okay, so this guy, this guy, do I have hits? I have a hit. I'm gonna punch him right in the dome. Good night. That's called a beneficiary. Whoop. Oh. That regulator fell in half. Okay. There it is. There it is. The regulators are dead. Okay, so I don't know if I left it in, but we <laughs> we had a game crash like right at the end of the fight, so I had to play through the last couple of turns. But it, the results were kind of the same, except John Zimmerman, I guess, got killed too, because he was in denial that his son was killed by the by the regulators. Oh well. Oh well. Um, thanks, thanks, Eddie Towner for the for the money. Let's talk to, let's talk to Razor. Um, that's her name, apparently. Razor, the leader of the Blades. Let's speak to her, and I guess collect our reward. Is there a reward besides the peace of mind that uh, the regulators no longer rule? Razor says, "Thank you for helping us with the regulators. Please feel free to stay as long as you want." You might want to check with Miles and Smitty. They may be able to help you with your further travels. Okay, so that's that's all she's got. We got a lot of places, a lot of dudes over here to loot for stuff to sell. Um, I don't even know if we need things to sell, to be honest. <laughs> well, we we do need to get those uh, those implants from from the Brotherhood. I would like to get those before we start heading towards the end of game. 
but okay, so we got Smitty right here, a large muscular man. Uh, we're gonna talk to Smitty in a second. We need to go talk to Miles, give him his junk parts for the uh, the the farm, the farm, yeah, the hydroponics farm. Miles gets right to the point after this fight in Aditum. Have you found the parts yet? Yes, here they are, Miles. He looks over the parts. Those are them, but it looks like Smitty is going to have to do a little work on them. Can you take them over to him? Sure. Okay, so now we go back to Smitty and introduce ourselves and say, hey, f it's to do your magic with these parts. He says, good day, what can I do for you? I need you to fix these parts for me so I can fix your hydroponic farms. Smitty replies, yes, I can fix this. Give me some time. And that was some time. Here you are, he says, hands you the fixed parts. Or hands me the fixed, hands me the fixed parts. Role playing, that's what we're doing. <laughs> okay, hi Miles. He takes the fixed parts from you. Looks like Smitty did a great job on these. Thanks for the help, and here's some stuff for your trouble. Miles hands you some caps and some stim packs. Miles also says, if you ever get back this way, you might want to look me and Smitty up. We might be able to help you out with some adjustments to your equipment. Smitty can work wonders with certain weapons, and I can help you out with certain sorts of armor. So I'm going to talk to him again. Miles says, looks like you found yourself some power armor. I've heard of a chemical process that I could use to harden the surface of the armor. However, I'm missing some information which could give me the last few clues to the formula and reagents necessary. I've heard the librarian in the hub, Mrs. Stapleton, has some journals and books that might be of use. If you could get those from there, I could probably test the process on your armor. Sounds good. I'll go find Miss Stapleton. Okay, so that sends me back to the hub and we can take care of a few things while we're there. Why not? Oh my goodness, this woman, this woman had a ripper! Ah! I bought one, and I didn't need to buy one. I should have waited until the fight was over, to be honest. Look at all this metal armor these guys have. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick it all up. There's no way. <laughs> There's no need. But I am gonna be looting the guys before I head out. So I looted a bunch of stuff from here, but I'm going to have to come back because there's so much on the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got all the caps that I could, and they had a crap ton of stim packs. Like, I I think I doubled how many I had. But uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to actually start traveling back to the Gunrunners. But I think first, we're going to go and meet some of the followers of the Apocalypse. And get our third and final human companion. Yes, there is one more. One more that we can get here. And she happens to be a uh, this way. One of the one of the green haired characters. There she is. <laughs> uh, one of the ones with the green mohawk. And that's that's her right there. She says, You're not from around here. Who are you? My name's Kato. She says, And what, may I ask, are you doing in the boneyards? First, tell me who you are. She says, Alright, fair enough. I'm Katya. What's it matter to you? Why so hostile? She says, look, 90% of people in the city fall into one or more of three categories. Raiders, raiders, or thieves. I'm a thief, and you actually seem polite. So that makes me wonder, okay? Call it a survival instinct. Well, I'm not from around here, so I don't think I count. She says, huh. Guess I can't argue with that logic, so what do you want? Can I ask you some questions? She says, maybe. You definitely aren't one of those gangland shiv shovers. What do you want? Can you tell me about the area around the city? Katya says, the Boneyard is a pretty hostile place. I've never had the opportunity to leave, though I suppose I'd take it. Let's see. Just south of here, you have the Cathedral. There's some sort of cult there, but I'd stay away from them. Something sinister is going on there. Also, I've heard about the trading center called The Hub, and caravans occasionally show up, but I've never been there. Well, I don't plan to stay in this place much longer myself. She says, no kidding. If you're looking for another hand, I'll sign on. Better than spending the rest of my existence in this hellhole, right? You're a welcome addition, but the desert's not much more fun. She says, all right, looks like you got a little butt kicking to do. All right. So now, now Katya's on my team. That's right. And she's going to use the Ripper. All right. So thanks to the the, uh, the companions guide that I did, I did a little bit more of a deep dive on, on each of the characters and what they're best best at. And Katya's is actually, she's a glass cannon kind of melee type. So I hooked her up with the Ripper. So she's going to be running around, uh, absorbing a lot of damage <laughs> and possibly dying or, or facing, facing death. There was a box in here. Ah, here it is. Okay. So if we ever feel like going back to the glow, we have plenty of Radex now. 
the uh, <laughs> the nice people here won't won't need don't don't really need their meds. I don't think. I think I might need them a little bit more. Survival of the fittest or most clever, perhaps. And since we have Kati on our team and our lockpick's not great, we can actually ask her to open gates or open doors for us too. I'm pretty sure that's a possibility. So if we run into a door that's that's uh, difficult, she'll she'll go ahead and jump in and try to open it instead. Okay, so we're looking for. There's there was some robes in here. Here they are. Okay, these are robes. These are cultist robes that I can wear. I'm gonna talk to this lady. Greetings. Hey, we're very glad you could join us. We hope you have found our humble abode to your satisfaction. Thanks. Can you tell me about? what you worship here? We don't worship so much as follow a set of principles. We want to bring peace back to this wasteland. The world tends toward destruction, so we try to make a difference. How's that? We try to remind people why the Great War happened in the first place, and help ensure it won't ever happen again. Have you been successful at all? We never give up hope. We never will, even though most live by the gun these days. And we are concerned with the children of the Cathedral. What about them? They claim to want peace like us, but anyone who disagrees with them just disappears. Their dark god is not what he seems, believe me. How do you know? Call it instinct. We've seen Morpheus and the Nightkin, and they don't look like peacemakers to us. Their hospitals and message of peace make them attractive, but we know there's evil there. Do you have any clues? A number of our spies have seen Nightkin coming in and out of the back room of the Children's Temple. Something important is back there. Well, I'll report anything I hear. Good. We could use any information. Now, is there anything else you'd like to ask? Yes. Ask, and I'll answer if I can. Can you tell me a little history behind the followers? What would you like to know? Where'd the followers start? Far to the south, near the Great Glow. The times were hard, but we managed to survive. We realized then the Great War must never happen again. So you started the Followers of the Apocalypse? After my parents were killed by marauders. It was time the killing stopped. It's our goal to make this land the way it used to be, before the war. Who were the marauders that you mentioned? We've never found out. Although we've heard a group live up north in an old ruined city. We've let it rest. What made you come up north? There aren't many left down south. The radiation polluted almost everything. Most of the remaining people followed us to start the organization. How did your family survive? We lived on the outskirts of the Great Glow. Sickness had started spreading, so we gathered all the people and we made our way north. <sighs> That's when my parents were killed. Why is the area down there that radioactive after all this time? Well, the rumor is that there was something so important there that the area was saturated with bombs to ensure everything was wiped out. It's been real, but I should go. Alright, so that's that's Nicole. She's pretty cool. She's a pretty, pretty interesting character. Uh, looks like the founder of the Followers of the Apocalypse. That's a another faction you guys will recognize. I'm sure... If you have any interest, uh, any any in interest or investment in Fallout New Vegas, because they they're there as well. So we're gonna go back up to the Gun Runners and trade to them really quick. I, I think I might just fast forward through this part because you've already seen the Gun Runners. I just need to vend vend some things. So I legit do not have enough inventory space <laughs> for all these things that I'm trying to get rid of, and the vendor doesn't have enough things that I want to sell all the stuff that I have. So I did my best for bartering. Um, I got everybody kind of equipped with what they need, except for Tycho, because gosh dang Tycho can't can't get rid of things because I'm carrying so much already. I'm, I'm carrying a lot of 14 millimeter pistols <laughs> that I would love to offload. Um, and Mrs. Stapleton in the hub can probably help us out with that because I would also like to get some skill books and jack up our skills a little bit and that'll That'll cost a few, a few caps here and there. So in order to actually leave, I'm pretty sure this is the only way to get the exit grid, is you go to Aditum down here, and then you go to the red grid over here. So now we go back to the hub to 
sell stuff, and also tie off some loose ends that I keep mentioning. <gasps> Special encounter. Just kidding. <gasps> oh my goodness. Is my character's luck at 10? Oh man. Okay, so this is the Nuka Cola truck encounter. This is the special encounter that um, is. The loot you get is determined by your luck. Let me show you how much we got. Let me show you how much we got here. <laughs> 10,765 caps, uh, and it's based on luck, uh, how much you get. So, since we had 10 luck, we got a lot of caps to grab here, but unfortunately, we can only go to 999 for each transfer. And because this is Fallout 1, there's no take all button, so we gotta keep clicking. We just gotta keep clicking. I'm not gonna have to worry about caps for a long time now. Oh man. And I can get those get those upgrades from the Brotherhood I was looking forward to. This this encounter was actually something I was looking for, because when we go back to the Brotherhood, we can get those implants. That is freaking cool. I love how that worked out. Yeah, back on our way. That's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna head out here. And somebody was asking. Will you do some Fallout 2 videos, and can you make the Fallout 1 videos longer? Okay, so yes, I am making some Fallout 2 videos. I'm actually working on a Highwayman guide right now. The Highwayman is the car, um, and Fallout 2 is one of the one of the two current Fallout games that you can get vehicles in. Um, and the car in Fallout 2 is mainly to increase speed on the world map in travel, and also an extra, extra means of storage. Uh, extra means of... it's like a mobile mobile chest, because you have the trunk. <laughs> We're going to talk to Miss Stapleton first. Hi, Mrs. Stapleton. How you doing? I would like some chemistry journals, please. Miles said you might have some. She says, yes, I heard from Miles, and I have the ones he's looking for. They will cost you 750 bucks. Sounds good. Here's your money. I have like 10,000 caps now, so we're good. But let's trade again and see if I can get some extra books here. Get a big book of science here. Get some get some the, uh, out, uh, scout handbooks scout handbooks that's what they're called and that'll be that'll be 10,000 caps or a whole bunch of weaponry for me <laughs> that's what it's gonna be have some weapons to defend your books and th they say the gun is mightier than the pen sometimes maybe I don't know is that what they say that could be what they say I could be completely wrong I don't know Thanks, Mrs. Stapleton. I'm gonna read these right now. I'm gonna read them immediately. So this book, learn new science information. This book, I learn a lot more about wilderness survival, even more, and even more. So this is something you, you wanna make sure you do after you find the water chip because it does take a lot of in-game time to read books. But let's look at our character again. Um, we boosted up to 41 outdoorsman skill and 76 science gun. I didn't get much of a much of a boost in that, but uh, any any boost is good boost, I think. So did I take care of the death claw without remembering, or did I leave the cave instead of just reloading the game? That might have been the case. Let's let's double check our pit boy here, our status in the hub. Find the missing caravans. That's... well, that's a problem. <laughs> let's let's talk to Butch and see if we can re-trigger the quest. I might have broken the quest. That's a possibility. Hey, Butch. Well, what do you got for me? What was I supposed to do again? Well, you're a bright one, ain't you? Here's the job. Find out who's stealing my caravans. Money. Big. You fail. Hurt. Big. Understand? Now get out of here. All right, thanks, Butch. You're you're a good you're a good guy. <laughs> you're a good dude. Okay, so let's go let's go to Old Town. Ah, uh, I may have I may have screwed up this quest. I may have made it impossible to finish. Okay, so I literally can't go to the Death Claw Cave now. Gosh, dang it! All right, well here's here's another cool thing we can do. I did show you guys this the last time we were here, but now I'm serious about taking out these thugs and freeing this initiate, so we're going to do that. Thanks so much for watching Kato Plays Fallout 1. New episodes for this series go up every single Friday until completion. Hitting that notification bell will remind you too. 
A special thank you to Wasteline Legends Fen, who is supporting me through Patreon, among a few amazing others on screen now. If you are interested in supporting as well, you can check out the link here and in the description. Thanks again, I'll catch you in the next episode.